Your primary airsoft gun is the most important piece of kit that you will bring with you onto the airsofting field. It doesn't matter if you have the Gucciest of plate carriers or the most special of snowflake camos. If you don't have a good airsoft gun with you, you're not going to be very effective on the airsofting field. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about how I have set up my personal airsoft gun. This is a Crytac CRB, and we're going to be talking about the reasoning why I have certain pieces of kit on here and why I have them the way that I do to make me the most effective that I can be, whether I'm going for those far 200 foot shots or I'm going room to room in a house, I have this set up in a way that can accommodate for both styles because, hey, you never know what you're going to run into on the airsofting field. What's up, guys? My name is Lane, and welcome to the BB Warrior. We're here to help you have a better time both on and off the airsofting field. And if you enjoy videos like this, I'd love it if you join our community by hitting that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, make sure to hit that bell icon next to it to join our notification squad and get updated when we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. And as a quick heads up, I will be at EMR Paintball Field in Pennsylvania on Sunday, November 12th. That's actually my birthday, so that'll be kind of fun. If you guys are there, come out, come find me. I'll have BB Warrior patches with me. And overall, it'll be a fun day. It's my first time going to EMR, and I am really excited. I'll have this exact gun with me. But why don't we talk about what I have on here? And we're going to start from the muzzle back, because this is where most of the action is. So first off, don't have a suppressor on here. This is an AEG. I talked about this a few videos ago. I don't find that foam-filled suppressors are very effective on an AEG compared to an HPA setup. I also run HPA, and I like it more on there, so it stays permanently on that gun. And for AEGs, their just added length with won't be very beneficial when I'm going from room to room, having a 16-inch barrel instead of a 10-and-a-half-inch barrel that's going to complicate things and that's going to make it harder to move in doorways so i personally don't use it now the next thing is a flashlight this is a situational one if this is a day that i will only be outdoors in a field that doesn't have buildings with roofs i'll take this off outright um, so at the moment i don't run this with a pressure pad onto the grip that is my preferred style i just haven't picked one up yet this is the primary arms um, micro compact flashlight i'll don't remember it'll be here um there will be a review of this and the t1 coming soon now that i've gotten a little bit more time with them since the last time i did a review about a year ago i really like both but i put it up here for a reason because i know a lot of people are probably looking at that weird and that has to do with the grip and my style of grip that i like on my airsofting gun so I'm the type of person that doesn't like AFGs or hand stops. I just find a broom handle grip to be the most comfortable for me. And because we're not dealing with recoil, even if you have a gas blowback, let's be honest, you only have the equivalent of a 22LR recoil, I don't care what you say, Airsoft doesn't have to deal with recoil, even if you run a gas blowback. So I don't need an AFG, and I just find that a broom handle is the most comfortable option for me. So the way that I have this set up, is that when I go to grip my airsoft gun, I can either do the broom handle, or most of the time I'll have like a halfway ridden up setup. It's a little bit hard to do because the gun is two feet in front of me. But the way that the grip is set up, I can grab this and hit the pressure pad on the back of my flashlight. So this is in a position that's comfortable for this. As well, if I'm shooting left-handed, I can do like a somewhat C clamp reach over and hit that light. So I find that to be a comfortable position. Should I pick up a um, pressure pad? Absolutely. That makes it a whole lot easier to shoot both left and right handed. However, this is what I am doing at the moment. So I like to keep my rail pretty bare because I don't like my guns front heavy at all because then that's gonna be obnoxious to sit there and hold it high ready all day. So I like to keep my front end as light as possible. So only the essentials. Now I do have a front sight up here. I have a fixed Crytac front sight. These come with the Crytac airsoft guns. And the reason that I have that there is for a very specific reason, and that has to do with a snapshot. So if I'm at that low ready, or I just have my gun slung and someone comes right in front of me, when I bring that gun up, it's going to be a whole lot easier to see this front sight post than to try to find my dot in the T1. So this is just something that gives me a point of reference for where my BBs are going to impact before I look at my dot. So if I'm in a real quick quick up and gun situation, I like having this. It's easier than trying to find the dot. Now you should 
try to work to find the dot as easily as possible and you bring your gun up. However, there are just some of those situations where this comes in real, real handy. So that's why I have that on there. On the end of the gun, I have a flip up sight because I don't like how like the Crytac rear sight, for example, interferes with looking through the T1. So I don't mess with those. Typically I'll do a fixed front and a drop down rear. Plus I mean, we're playing airsoft. So how accurate are your iron sights to begin with? Well, moving back on the rail, I have a swing swivel. And I know a lot of people kind of question how I do swings. However, I want to explain it in this video. So my two swing points, I have the one right where the buffer tube meets the gun. And then I have my forward one as close to the receiver as possible. And I do that for a very deliberate reason. The reason that I have this set up here where they're so close, because most people will do the end of the barrel and the end of the buttstock. This makes it much easier with a two point sling to shoot off-handed. So typically when you shoot off-handed with a two-point sling, you have to take your arm out of the sling to be able to move it to your left-hand side or your right-hand side respectively if you're a lefty to shoot. So with this, it gives me just a little bit more room to throw the stock over the sling and to shoot left-handed. So I find that this makes like the best of both worlds between the comfort of a two-point swing over time and the adaptability of a one-point swing. Um, I've actually talked about both systems in a previous video. If you'd like to see that, there will be a card in the upper right-hand corner right now about my opinion between swings and the adaptable swings like the Magpul series. So that is my swing. I use a glorious VTAC swing. I think that this is one of the best swings out there on the market. One of these days, I'm going to do a comparison between this and the Swingster. But moving to the top of the receiver, again, I'm very minimalist in my setup. I have a primary arms micro red dot. It's their T1 knockoff. I chose this because this is considered a real steel optic. I really hate using that word, but bear with me. I like using better optics in Airsoft because they're just more reliable. They have a better dot, better visibility, and this wasn't that much. I think they're only like $100, and um, probably even less than that. And it's not like I'm going out to buy like a real EOTech, but then again, if you want to go out and buy a real EOTech, it's your money, go right ahead. So I find that like the entry level AR-15 red dots are great for airsoft. I mean, this will hold up to doing gas blowback as well. Like I know a lot of the fake EOTechs don't handle even the worst of airsoft recoil. And then in front of that, I do have a little Lexan shield. This is one of the cheap Vulcan ones. Um, Speed Airsoft makes fantastic Lexan protectors. I'm gonna be switching over to one of those soon. I mean, seriously, they're like maybe two BBs thick. So that is really everything that I keep on my airsofting gun. The stock is just the Bear Crytac stock. What I will run on here, depending on the event, is I'll throw my GPS on the back of my stock. I run a Garmin Fortrex. If it's at a field that's huge, I've never been to, been to before or if I'm at a Milsim event where it could come in handy for marking locations. Well, it's one of those things, I already own it, might as well bring it out to BB Wars. But this is my setup in Airsoft. Everything is very deliberate, and I have everything on this gun for a specific reason. And that is my biggest piece of advice in this video. If you have your gun cluttered with attachments and nonsense, well, that's not going to make you very effective on the airsofting field. After all, ounces lead to pounds and pounds lead to pain. So I would say take a look at your airsoft gun and if there's things on there that you don't need, ditch them. Like for example, I don't run a dummy pack 15 because they're just kind of useless. I only use it if I need it for a battery box, like if I'm on my HPA unit. But I like to keep my gun as streamlined as possible and I would advise that you guys do as well. However, remember, looking cool matters. Looking cool is the most important thing that you can do. So try to find a balance between a bunch of attachments on your gun and looking cool. So, and efficiency, excuse me. So that is really going to do it for this video, guys. I just thought that this would be a interesting video to talk about. Uh, I know I get a lot of questions about my setup for rifles and kit, and I'm going to be doing a whole lot more of those videos as well as reviews. I'm actually going to be working on a loadout video soon. So make sure to see that, or you're going to be seeing that coming down the tube soon. There's going to be a lot of reviews because we're hitting that Black Friday time period, and this is going to be a real fun month. However, if you have any suggestions or anything that you'd like to see, make sure to let me know down in the comments below. But thank you guys so much for staying until the end. Again, if this was your first time here and you enjoyed the video, 
I'd love it if you join our community by hitting that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, make sure to hit the bell icon next to it to get updates when we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday here on the channel. Make sure to check us out on social media. Links will be down in the description below, as well as where you can pick up a BB Warrior patch to help grow the channel and help improve the quality of the videos that we do here. Links for those will be down in the description below. I hand package them myself. I ship them out myself. But anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Lane from the BB Warrior talking about my primary rifle setup and why I have things the way I do. And I will see you all next time.